Good morning everybody. Good morning. So today we're in Iceland. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful Iceland. Reykjavik, Iceland. <laughs> yeah, to be specific. But uh, yeah, it's our first time to Iceland. We've never been before. We have always wanted to come. Yes. Um, we're here on the NCL Prima. Yep. So yeah, we're just going to get off and experience uh, Reykjavik. There is lots of excursions you can do through your cruise company. Or external companies. Or external companies, yep. yeah. But because we haven't been before, we're just literally going to explore the city of Reykjavik. Yes. And then it is probably somewhere that we'd like to come back to. I'd like to hire a car. Not on a cruise, yeah, for a few days. And drive around. and. Yeah, you've obviously got like the Blue Lagoon, which I know is popular. The volcano. But yeah. There's so much to do on this island, but we just don't have enough time. No. Because we're on a cruise. So, so if, yeah, if like us, you're coming by a cruise ship and you've just got a day here yeah. and you may be like us, just want to see what Reykjavik has to offer, then that's what this video is yeah. for. There's a free shuttle. Yeah. We're guessing that's the same for all the cruise ships because mm -hmm. our cruise ship hasn't put it on. We've just seen one out the back. Oh. I think it's about four kilometers from where we're yeah. docked up into Reykjavik. So uh, it's a little bit chilly. It's dry at the moment, but I think it does <laughs> give rain. So we are wrapped up, but uh, I think we best go and go wait for this uh, shuttle yeah. and see where we get dropped off. So just as soon as you walk out of the little cruise terminal, here's your cruise shuttle. This is the one that you will get. There's a little map on the side that says uh, all the different cruise port locations. It looks like there might be three different cruise ships that you can get picked up on by this uh, little cruise shuttle. But this is one you'll need to get anyway. So the cruise shuttle drops you off just by the Harper Concert Hall and Convention Center. That's this big black building here. So as always, it's what we always say, put a pin in Google Maps and you'll remember where it is. So it drops you off in a nice scenic spot. Just uh, behind Stacy is the statue of a metal Viking ship we don't know the name of. <laughs> so that's up that way. We'll show you that after because I've got a bit of a plan Got a bit of a route. I was going to say that took about because we didn't have to pick up it anywhere else. It just took about ten minutes. Yeah. If that, you can actually just see our ship just behind me in the background there. So yeah, it's not too far. I suppose you could even walk it. I think it said it takes it about an about hour. Fifty minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fifty minutes, 50 minutes to an hour. To an hour about four kilometres. I don't know. You may as well get the shuttle and experience more of the city then. Hopefully, you can see just at the end there that big red double decker bus. That's one of those. Uh, hop on hop off buses that you see in every major city that does pick you up from the cruise terminals as well if you're interested in doing less walking and more sightseeing that might be a better option from for you as it does pick you up from the cruise terminal as you face the harper center we turned left okay and if you see a h&m next to that is a small door which is home to the icelandic philological museum so this is the icelandic Penis Museum, okay? <laughs> it says it's home to more than 200 penises and penile parts representing most Icelandic land and sea mammals. So if you're interested in seeing a lot of penises in what I'm only guessing is formaldehyde, uh, then it costs about £16 each if you want to visit. <laughs> I've got no interest in it myself. I think we'll give that one a mess, but yeah. it's there if you're interested. Yes. So we have noticed already just by looking at Google Maps that some of the street names or the places that we're going to be visiting, such as the church, a lot of the names in Iceland are hard to pronounce, especially unlike us, you only uh, speak English. But I think this street name behind is Steinbrugge or something like that. So we might butcher a few of the names, but yeah, they do seem quite difficult, uh, d quite difficult words. So there's a little green steam train. We're not 100% what sure that's there for, but if you come just past that and you see all these maps, it's pretty interesting. So each one is representing roughly a decade and uh, each one shows you where ships have sank off Iceland. So all these little numbers 
and all these little different symbols here around all the coasts of Iceland is why and where different ships have sunk or caught fire or all different things so if you're interested in the history of sunken trawlers and ships and boats in Iceland all these maps are uh, going to be very useful to you now obviously 1939 to 1945 World War II there's going to be a lot more as you can see there's loads especially here all around there's a lot more and it tells you each one and why they sank or where they were from so here you can see there's British ships, Canadian ships, American ships there's a couple of German ones at the top, a Polish one so if you're interested in all this information even goes back to 1870 then have a look at these just next to the the maps there that told you about the sunken ships there's a little statue here called Looking Seawards Stacy's just trying to remember what it says right okay so it's a memorial and it says to comm commemorate the 80th anniversary of the port of Reykjavik and also the 60th National Seamen's Day in 1997 so, so there you go they should maybe build another one for and I mean, 97, 2007, 2007. So in another four years, it could be the 90th Seaman's Day. So dotted all about, you've got uh, whale watching trips, puffing trips, there's angling trips. You can do it on a rib boat. You can do it on one of these larger boats here, like this red and white one just there. They're all different ones. There's a rib boat there for you. Might be, well, it's not might be, it's way too cold for us at the moment to do it on one of those so uh, pick your trip wisely but you don't always have to do it through the uh, the cruise company no no not at all these um, obviously companies you know they work alongside they know that the cruise ships are coming in so they know that you need to be back and stuff like that so i wouldn't worry about that um, we are actually doing a whale watching trip in um, Akureyri in Iceland uh, when we next go there so that'll be a future video uh, we could have done it here but obviously there's more to do here than there is yeah. in Akureyri so we went for do the whale trip there instead but it's an option um, if you want to do it here instead that's the one place on the cruise ship where as we talk to other passengers and stuff from America other Brits things like that we, we all pronounce it differently so I'm going with Akureyri, Akureyri, I don't know. We have tried to listen to one of them uh, talking videos on YouTube that tries to pronounce things. Yes. It, it didn't work. We've been sat in the buffet like half the time like pointing in and trying to listen to it. So there's the hopper centre there, the big black building. So we've walked just along the front down past this harbour where you see a old white and yellow ship. Next to that is the Reykjavik Maritime Museum. This uh, was about £17 each to get in. There was a few different prices. I don't know if there's a few different uh, experiences or something once you're in there. I can see a picture up there with a very big cod. So if you're into very big cod and maritime things, then it could be a museum for you. This is Wales of Iceland. It's an exhibition of uh, regional whales around the Icelandic uh, region. There's 23 life-size whale models and funnily enough it costs roughly 23 pounds to get in so it's roughly a pound per life-size whale it does say as well it's the largest whale exhibition in europe yeah so there you go could be interesting so like we said it isn't too far to walk but just behind kev's left shoulder there is one of the stops for the city sightseeing uh, shuttles so it does stop off there you could always get off have a look around the museum and hop back on oh, hop off and hop back on and hop off again and on again just keep doing that <laughs> just around the corner from the whale exhibition you've got the fly over iceland experience i think the clues in the name really i think the experience is that you're going to be flying over iceland they might take you over the blue lagoon or over one of the volcanoes if you've been to the disney park 
Epcot. I think it's similar to the Soaring Experience, I believe it's called. So yeah, the, the clue is basically in the name. So that is priced at £33 each, which is pretty expensive. But you know, if you've been planning your holiday or vacation to Iceland for a few years now, you might not mind splurging out a little bit and just having a really fun experience with your family. So another way you could get around Reykjavik if you wanted is one of these little uh, electric scooters. We've seen quite a few of them. Seems like you can just place your phone Oh, that might charge your phone if it's uh, wireless charging as well. But it looks like you can scan that QR code. I'm guessing that there's an app and you pay per uh, per minute. That's what they normally are anyway. So if you wanted a quicker, maybe funner way to get around Reykjavik, you can just jump on one of these. And then just down the road from the whale exhibition and the flyover Iceland, you've got the lava show. Now this is the world's only live lava show. It looks pretty cool. And if we were going to do one of the three places, this would be it. Once again, this is about £36. Uh, from what I've seen on Google, it looks like there's a slope and they release a door and it looks like, they, they call it lava, not 100% sure if it is. It looks like lava falls down the slope and they, they explain to you the whole process of volcanoes and lava and that kind of stuff. I'd hope it is lava when it's called the lava show. You'd, you'd hope so. So of course, on any visit to Iceland, you would hope that you get to see the Northern Lights but it isn't guaranteed and especially if you're on a cruise like us you know you're not here for very long so you may not get a chance to see them at all but i suppose the next best thing is this behind me which is the aurora Reykjavik. now that's uh, seen the northern lights but a little bit differently it's a vr experience um it's 17 pounds each so there you go if you want the next best thing head in there so some of the places we just showed you by the harbour area they are a bit more it's a bit more industrial so we're gonna go and head now more into downtown Reykjavik Kev said it's that way it's that way that way so as we're getting into the downtown area now there's this hot dog stand little hut it's very popular it's the most popular thing we've seen anywhere there must be about 40 people here waiting they look like from what I've seen of other people's just pretty standard hot dogs I went on the website and Bill Clinton's been here, so if you're a big fan of Clinton, come and have a, a hot dog. I don't know if they've got one named after him. Right, so we didn't know that they had a hard rock cafe here in Reykjavik. We have visited a few of these in places that we've been before. We're obviously not going to this one because we've eaten far too much on the cruise, but they've also got the little shop as well. If you want to grab a hard rock cafe Reykjavik t-shirt. The blaring red hot chili peppers as well, so can't go wrong. So we're just heading up to the church now. Uh, we're just walking up one of these streets. It's like a narrow little Icelandic street here with loads of little gift shops. And for once, we've actually seen a couple of places that you could just buy a drink from, like a normal mini supermarket kind yeah, of place. Yeah, there wasn't really many the harbour way, was there? But um, we have obviously watched other travel videos on Iceland, so we were already prepared to know that it was expensive, but we've just been in one, one of the souvenir shops and there was this little house figure that said Iceland on and I picked it up and we worked it out on the conversion thing how much it was and then uh, in British pounds it was 22 yeah 22 pounds so yeah pretty expensive so just be warned but now we are going not up there where there's more shops we're going up here as you can see there that's the start of Rainbow Street Rainbow Street is just a street with a rainbow painted on the ground all the way up. It literally starts just at the end there and it finishes here. It doesn't carry on but uh, it's just a little walk up to the church. So if you wanted some Instagram-y pictures you can get some there. So before we came we Google stuff obviously and we saw that Iceland's favourite soft drink is apple sin. I've just had a quick taste of it. It's like a very bland uh, orange soft drink. That's what it actually said. Well, it doesn't say it's very bland orange soft drink. It just says it's an orange soft drink. It's nothing special. And at 400 krone, Icelandic krone? A bottle, it's a little bit expensive. But apparently at Christmas, they do mix it with malt. And uh, apparently it's a very festive Christmas drink. Bit different. So poor Kev has got a headache, can't you? So we've just nipped to into a shop yeah. to get a drink and he says, 
I may as well wash my tablets down with apparently the nation's favourite drink. So, um, how is it? <laughs> God, there's a lot of calories in it. There was a sugar-free option. Oh, okay, yeah. but yeah, there's a lot of calories in it, but very bland. So we just popped into another gift shop, and just a tip, if you're uh, coming to Iceland, definitely bring a hat, because these hand-knitted hats, it says made by grandma, are 63 pounds. So make sure you pack correctly, people. You know who you are if you're watching this. Don't ask people for borrowed airs. Bring your own. Mine was a £2.99 from B&M in England. So there you go, £2.99 or 63 Mine hasn't got horns, I'll give you that, but you know, big price difference. Right, so we're finally at the church now. There's gonna be a lot of uh, bad pronunciations here. We do apologize. So it's called Holgrimskirkia. That's completely wrong. I know it is, I know it is, but just give us a break, okay? And then next to that, just here as well, this is a statue. I'm guessing it's a statue of a Viking. This is called Skolvjord Holt. Once again, very sorry. But uh, it's a very beautiful church. We first thing they said it was it reminds me of something out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I did, yeah, I said it looks like Lord of the Rings. But that name that Kev was trying to pronounce what it's called, which I can't even pronounce it myself actually, but it's named after a Icelandic poet and minister, so it says. So the design of the church, which looking at it, you know, is pretty simple but it's just beautiful in its own way so it was designed like that to resemble the trap rocks mountains and glaciers of iceland's landscape okay now just be warned it's a bit breezier up here because you're a bit higher up so uh maybe make sure you've got some gloves on because i've got no gloves on and my fingers are about to drop off inside is pretty much the same as the outside it's very sleek it's very concrete a lot of glass it's very nice inside though considering it's free it's worth going in to have a look at this beautiful building now you can go up to the top I think it's about eight stories high well that's what the, it went up to number eight on the elevator anyway there's a charge I think it works out to roughly about eight pounds each uh, we were thinking about doing it but it's a very grey day. We're feeling a few spots of rain now. You're not going to get a good view. I, can barely, I can't even see the ship over there from where we are anymore. So I think the clouds are coming in. Uh, so it might be worth it on a nice sunny day to maybe go up there. I bet you can see for miles around, but on a bit of a grey, dull day like this, it's probably not worth it if you want to get some beautiful shots with your camera and stuff like that. And also apparently, we did read that you get the elevator up so high and then you have to walk up so many steps but the, the elevator did only hold six people and there was a big queue forming as well so depending on how many people deep you are it could take you a little while to get up there as well so if you are in a bit of a rush to maybe get back on a cruise ship these are all things that you have to think about the last thing now before we get back on the shuttle it's just down there so this is the sun voyager so i think everybody's probably seen this picture somewhere it's one of the most famous uh, sculptures on the island i believe so this is described as a dream boat or an ode to the sun the artist intended it to convey the promise of undiscovered territory a dream of hope progress and freedom looks like a metal boat to me the forks sticking out of it yeah shiny forks could have chips on top of them forks taste oh nice big chunky chips that would be a chunky chip wouldn't it but you know it's just down here literally a two minute walk from where that free shuttle drops you off so you know you haven't got to walk out your way for it right so the rain's picked up quite a bit now so i think we're gonna head back to the ship yep so yeah i hope it's just give you some ideas what to do if you know more specifically like us you've just got one day maybe here in Reykjavik you've come by cruise ship i would like to come back iceland um 
especially for a few days yep. and go and explore more. If we if we came back here on cruise ship again, we would probably look at doing an excursion. Definitely. But for the first time, because like I said at the beginning, I was, it's our first time here, it was nice to actually see Reykjavik. So yeah, yeah I hope it's given you some ideas of what to do. Yeah, and uh, you may be thinking, we've watched your videos before, where's your Starbucks mug? Ah, uh, yes. They yeah. don't have Starbucks in uh, <laughs> Iceland, so unfortunately, we couldn't get one and we looked in the gift shops they had none that were very similar no so, so unfortunately we couldn't get one before we get absolutely drenched let's go back to the shuttle so uh, as always thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time bye, bye.